everybody and welcome to another development log for Battle Tanks, the web-based game I'm creating using TypeScript and 3.js. Uh, this this devlog uh, is comprised of four new features that I've added to the game, uh, all of which has uh, combined to create the first quote-unquote release of the game, which is uh, which is which could really be considered the first release of the game, since this is the first time players can connect to an unofficial server and play the game in between two tabs or in between two computers or something like that. So we've definitely come a long way. So uh, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So as you'll see here, uh, we have the same initial menu. Um, however, if you'll remember from before, when you hit play before, there was a menu with a connect and a cancel button. And then if you hit the connect button, you would be brought onto another screen that had a big text field that was way too big for, uh, for the page size. That's now been changed, and we have a list of servers here. There's only one uh, that you can choose from, and you can add or remove servers as necessary, join servers, uh, or you can you can choose choose the server and then uh, join with this, or by double click, and then of course you can cancel out the menu. So let's go ahead, and I'll just go ahead and demo uh, adding a server. So if we do uh, test server, and you know just you know just localhost, you know with a, with a port. You do have to. You, you probably do have to specify that in most cases. So then, if you save that, then you can actually connect to this server, which we can locally. So if we do that, you can see because I have the local server running right now, you can see that it connects. So if we go ahead and go back here, we can also remove the server, and then it's gone just like that. So you can edit this server server list as you as you feel uh, is needed. So this is all stored locally. So that's something to consider. So that way, so remember, if you clear your cache and your cookies and stuff like that, uh, your server list is going to go with you too uh, right now. So just keep that in mind uh, while you're playing the game. So if we go ahead and hop onto the official server, so this is a server that's actually hosted on Heroku, and uh, that's in comparison to the local host, which is hosted on my machine. So we'll go ahead and uh, join both of these players. And the first thing you're going to notice here is that as the game starts, besides this green bar on the bottom, which we'll get to, you'll notice that this player is rotated uh, forward. And it's at a slightly lopsided angle, but it's it's pretty close to pointing, you know, generally pretty straight on. Now, if we go to the other player, you'll notice that they have the same thing going on. Now, what that means is that the rotation, uh, being able to create a spawn, a spawn point with rotation enabled, or or with rotation set uh, by by the creator of the arena, is now enabled. Before, the rotation was always set to zero, so that meant that everyone was always facing the same direction. Now, if you have four players in a corner, they can all face the center, they can all face the, they can all face the wall, they can all face some random direction that you choose, and I'll go, and I'll go ahead and demo that to you when I create an arena later. Uh, next thing I want to demonstrate is uh, this bar right here, uh, and this is a cooldown bar. So I've implemented cooldowns, uh, I've implemented a cooldown whenever you shoot uh, the weapon, or, or the you know, when you fire the the gun on the on the tank, I guess is what you would call it. So it's a one second interval right now, and that will be uh, user configure or that will be a server admin configurable. So that'll be a configurable option that can be passed to the players. So that means that as we, uh, so that means essentially that as I shoot, you'll notice that the bar recharges. So even though he's shooting and missing, obviously, you know, he's shot, shooting way off to the left, that bar is continuously refilling. So if I spam click, you know, like you would in the game, you can only shoot once per second. Additionally, uh, if we get close to the player, you'll notice that you can hear a shoot sound, and if we go ahead and spam click again, you can hear that, that kind of a lower pitch sound, and those are actually two different sounds, one of which is the shoot sound, and one of which is the invalid shoot sound. So, you know, how original, right? Um, but that's essentially another way to indicate to the player whether or not they can uh, shoot or not. Now, the last thing I'm going to uh, show you here is a bit of a cacophony, usually. Um, but this is uh, the win and lose sound that are played together on the same, on the same, on the same player. So, or, you know, on, on the two players, because both of these tabs have some audio context that's being played right now. So you end up hearing both of those sounds together. But if you go ahead and play the play on the official server uh, with yourself and or with two computers or with a friend or something like that, you can hear those sounds independently, and they're actually kind of neat. So 
that is sounds enabled, rotation enabled, the cooldown uh, bar created, and the new multiplayer menu. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you, this is on localhost. Still working out a few of the kinks on the on the official server. You can create an arena now, and if you specify, if you create an arena, you can actually, I'll show you how you specify game spawns right now. So let's say we want to create uh, a game spawn or an initial spawn at this location. Uh, you specify direction by based on the point in the square that you click on. So if you, uh, so that's based from center. So if I click roughly in this point, I'm going to get an arrow now that points in this direction. So that would mean a game spawn would be created in this arena that would spawn the tank facing that direction. So, uh, and again, if you want to remove that, you can then uh, face it that direction, or you know, in a corner, or you know, something like that. So, and then the same thing works with initial spawns. We'll just go ahead and keep that initial that game spawn in there for reference. Initial spawns work the same way; they're just a different color. That's all that is. So now you have that indication when you're creating an arena where your game spawns and initial spawns are, and so that way you can plan accordingly when you're creating or editing your arenas. So that is going to wrap it up for this development log. I have made a fantastic amount of progress, and I appreciate everybody who has followed followed the stream or watched any of the YouTube videos. I, it's We're truly making some good progress here. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap this up. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.